podcast at home and the internet is in, in and out a bit. So I have to apologise to everybody. I think we've, we're missing slightly, but I'll try and keep up. Um, and hopefully you'll better keep up with me. So Jane, if you could put, put the first slide on for us. It just seems to be delays just slightly, like a little... Uh, is it going up the M um, forty, Julia? Yes, yeah, yes, you just yeah. you're coming further up. But don't start that. I'm here to discuss three D embroidery and hopefully explain how to achieve this brilliant raised embroidery effect using our three D foam, which we at Madeira call our bodybuilder range. Next slide, please. The image here shows where our green frosted matte thread is used to cover the foam and then the design has been randomly wrapped with our thicker 30 weight metallic FR30. It's a great shot this and it actually shows where you can see the raised effect fully explaining what, what 3D embroidery is about. Next slide please. See here with just a few simple steps 3D embroidery can be achieved. I will go through in a little more detail in a few moments. Now I've also a short video um, and hopefully we'll take you through these steps in each one. Next video, please. Now these are a couple of examples. Now this is Alice Selwood, it's for, this was her piece and she was a winner of the Hand and Lock Prize. Um, here Alice has created 3D structure to create this stunning piece using Bodybuilder and Madeira Classic. You can see where the, the uh, end pieces where they've been raised to you can achieve it actually just by stitching but the foam keeps it lighter it doesn't weigh the design down the next design um, next slide please and say the next design well it is a design yes yeah, suppose it is yeah once again see how this piece how alice has used bodybuilders to lift the triangular shape within her design so it's um so each piece has been done and the cushions on the top row have all been used with bodybuilder enhancing it the design, I think Jane's gonna zoom in for me. Here, here's clearly. And the lighting on this photograph really shows the 3D effect. Avail um, Bodybuilder is available in hard and soft. Um, and it's available in different colors too. Hard foam creates more prominent contour lines and is popular for baseball caps, whereas soft foam offers more flexibility. So this is, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about needles. Obviously, and Jane has, and um, we do normally refer to it, the importance of needles. So I'm going to put first things first. So ballpoint SES needles perforate the foam better and work on many fabrics, but always choose the needle style and size most suitable for the material that you're embroidering onto. Sharp point RG needles are best for tightly woven fabrics. Next slide, please. Baseball caps, you either love them or they hate them. But for baseball caps, use a, a size 80 or larger needle or try using extra strong titanium special application needles. Titanium coating for wear and tip protection can last up to five times longer than the average needle. You don't really need to remember all this information. I should have said this a little bit earlier. It is really readily available on our, on our online catalog, on our website, and of course our online shop. There's lots of detail on there. Um, um, when and why to use certain needles, sharp or board point, etc. So do refer to it. So it's it's our job to let you obviously tell you what we and how we can help you. But obviously the big part is for you to know where to find this information for yourselves. Next slide, please. How often should I change a needle? Well, this gets this is a big question. Instead, we recommend a needle change schedule. Change one needle per head every week. This will really reduce thread breaks and therefore, therefore avoid unnecessary machine downtime. Next slide, please. When to change? Well, we recommend you change uh, when introducing a new weight of thread, a new material, and indeed a new technique, such as 3D embroidery. New needles will help improve the quality of your embroidery. Next slide, please. Stitch density. Well, Jane referred to this earlier. This is a term used to explain how close one stitch is to the next. Here you can see the lower the number, the top line there, the lower the number, the smaller gap between the stitches, the closer the stitches are to each other. Next slide, please. Typically, 
we work with a stitch density of about 0 0.2 with 3D embroidery. But this can vary with depending on the design and the product. The higher the density creates better coverage, which is required to completely encompass the foam. Next slide, please. Oh, and this is where it's not great. So here we witness how the stitch density, density isn't low enough, resulting in poor in an inadequate coverage, where here you can see the gaps between the stitches. The idea is if you increase your stitch density, it will be a complete block of thread, completely stitching over the top. Next slide, please. Oh, the perfect font. Whether it be in-house or external uh, digitizers that you use, you must make sure they know how to accommodate 3D stitching. It's important that open ends are closed off with a cap. This ensures that the foam is cut underneath it, allowing you to tear easily away at the end without the risk of unraveling your threads. Bodybuilder structure allows stitches to create a clean perforation, ensuring it will pull away easily. As always, digitizing is part of a team. Your design will only be as good as it is digitized. This image shows the perfect font for 3D. See how it flows well around the round edges, giving a clean finish. Next slide, please. To secure bodybuilder, you need to, sorry, remember to secure a bodybuilder onto the fabric. You can use this with a bit of self-adhesive spray, a tacking stitch or good quality masking tape. Literally stitch out and it will pull it away. And here you should be left with a nice clean finish. A little tip is a quick blast of a heat gun or a heat press. This will cause the foam to retract slightly, pulling in any parts of foam that may be showing through. Next, I think this is our video next, if I can just... <laughs> Here is a great visual. See how the foam sits on top of the fabric, not within the frame. You need to pre-cut the foam slightly larger than the 3D area required and simply place it onto the top. To prevent moving, you can use your self-fixing uh, self temporary adhesive spray, which I mentioned earlier, and so, or you could secure with a stop stitch, top and bottom. To increase the embroidery height, you could use two layers of foam. Remember though, to increase the pull compensation of the design to accommodate the extra thickness. See here how the satin stitch encompasses all of the foam. The majority of the foam will simply pull away, but smaller pieces may need to be removed with the help of some tweezers. And here is a perfect example. But don't be in a hurry. Remember, slowing down your machine will help the final quality of the finished product. This, obviously this uh, slide here shows the satin stitches. Embroidered 3D area of your design using satin stitches as used here for optimum results. A tatami film compress the foam, as do underlay stitches and won't give the same raised effect. Increase the stitch length and loosen the thread tension so that the foam is not compressed and avoid underlay stitches as these, are com uh, these compress the foam also. Seal off the ends of any straight edges with extra stitches um, using a zigzag um, to stop the foam from showing through. Aim to use as few traveling run stitches as possible between sections. Column width. A good column width is important. Not every design will lend itself to 3D embroidery and you may find that you need to loosen your top tension depending on your garment and machine being used. Ideally, a seven millimeter column width works great with 3D embroidery, up to a maximum of 13 or 15. And at the gist gauge, your machine will clunk from side to side as it lays down the satin stitch, but it's workable. Next slide, please. Using the same color foam as the thread will help digitize uh, digitize any foam that he's putting through, that's correct. We always recommend that you use the same colour foam as the uh, thread colour. 
as this will help any small parts of foam that sometimes push out. Madeira has a full palette of coloured foam available, all of which have been coloured and matched to thread. We have really tried to make things as simple as possible. Have the next slide, please. All available, all available to view on our online shop, on our website, and of course, our online shop, sorry, I should say catalogue, website and online shop. Next slide, please. And this is a summary. You make sure you use the correct needle size, round or more point, uh, digitize accordingly, double the density, suitable font, satin stitch, etc. On caps, extra and varying layers. Uh, traversing panel seams and adhes uh, adhesives create extra strain. Just to reiterate, don't be in a hurry. Slowing down your machine will help the final quality of your finished product. And lastly, there's just another couple of designs for you. Here you can see they use the 3D foam, 3D embroidered on the back of a denim jacket. It was just trying to get across the different areas that you can use and encompass, um, incorporate 3D work into your designs.